All right. So now in this lesson, we look at rear end collisions and explosions. All right. So our first example here, we have a car of mass 4,000 kilograms traveling to the right at 15 meters per second. It is rear-ended by another car of mass 5,000 kilograms, also traveling to the right, but at a greater speed of 20 meters per second. If they become coupled after collision, what is their common velocity? So here we begin by drawing our diagram. This bigger truck traveling at a faster speed is behind the smaller car traveling at a slower speed. It rear-ends that car. We don't really need to do this, but it's still a good practice. We pick our positive direction to be to the right. They're not traveling in opposite direction, so it's not really necessary, but it won't hurt. So after collision, they become coupled, they stick together. What is their common velocity after collision? Well, before you work on a problem like this, there should be some estimates of what your answer should be, or at least a range of what possible answers could be, right? Let's think about it. This car is traveling at 15. That big truck is traveling at 20. If it comes from behind and hits that other car which was traveling slower, what do you expect to happen? Will this one here go even slower? Will that one there pick up speed? No, doesn't make sense, right? If this one is gonna hit the back of that one, then won't the big truck that was traveling at 20 slow down? And won't the small car that was traveling at 15 gain some speed? So if that is logically what makes sense, then we should expect to get an answer between 15 meters per second and 20 meters per second, right? They're gonna share and gain some of that velocity together. This small car will gain velocity and that large truck is going to lose some of its velocity. So when we work this out, we should expect to get a number in between 15 and 20. So let's identify our events. We have that the mass of the small car is 4,000 kilograms. The big truck is 5,000 kilograms. Before the collision, their initial velocities were 15 meters per second and 20 meters per second respectively. Please note, none of them are negative, right? They're both going to the right. Afterwards, their common velocity is both V that we don't know yet. So we write down our formula, the same formula that applies whether it is a head-on collision or a rear-end collision or an explosion. It all is the same formula, just different situations, right? We substitute our values, 4,000 times 15 plus 5,000 times 20 is equal to 4,000 times V plus 5,000 times V. So simplifying, we get 60,000 plus 100,000 is equal to 4,000 V plus 5,000 V. That adds up to give you 160,000, that adds up to give you 9,000 V. If you divide both sides by 9,000, you get that V is equal to 17.78 meters per second. Notice that this is positive, positive is to the right direction. It only makes sense that if both of them were traveling to the right and then the smaller car gets rear-ended, they'll continue moving to the right. If you got a negative, then that should be like a red flag that something is wrong. It doesn't make sense that both of them are traveling to the right and then after they collide, they move to the left. No, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't work like that at all, right? No time will you observe a rearing collision where they then start moving backwards. No. So positive 17.78. This 17.78, as we noted before, is greater than 15, but less than 20. So yeah, if you got anything less than 15 or anything more than 20, anything out of this range, that is also another red flag that you did something wrong. So our final answer is that their common velocity is 17.78 meters per second to the right. Let's now look at an example of an explosion. And when I say explosion, all different kinds of things can mean an explosion. It's not literally a bomb exploding, but we'll see, all right? Okay, girls, so now for this example of explosions, it's not really an explosion we're looking at, you know, where things fly apart at all angles and directions, but it is still considered an explosion because two things were, in, um, because the two objects were initially together and then they went apart from each other. So we could call that an explosion even though it's not explosive. So here we have a person jumps out of a dory at 10 meters per second. What is the recoil velocity of the dory if it is 20 times as massive as the person? So as usual, let's begin by drawing a diagram. So initially, the dory and the person were together. 
Then what happens? Person jumps out of the dory at 10 meters per second, and then the dory it goes at some velocity. Here we don't really know what direction you know, because it just said the person jumps out of the dory. But based on our diagram, let's say that the right direction is positive. So now we then proceed to identify our givens. What is the mass of the person? Well, the question unfortunately does not say. However, that's not really necessary because the question does tell us that the dory is 20 times as massive as the person. That's enough information. So what we can do is we can say let the mass of the person be m and then the mass of the dory will be 20m because that is 20 times as massive. It is 20 times m, 20m. Before this explosion occurred, both of them were together. Let's assume that they were stationary. If they were stationary, then both initial velocities will be 0 meters per second. After the explosion, after the person jumped off the dory, her velocity was 10 meters per second. We chose right to be positive, so that's a positive 10 meters per second. What is the velocity of the dory? We don't know. That's what we're going to find. So as always, we then write down our formula and then we substitute. So we'll have m times 0 plus 20m also times 0 is equal to m times 10 plus 20m times our unknown v. So if that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0. m times 10 is 10m. 20m times v is 20mv. 0 plus 0 is, of course, 0. When we transpose this 10m to the other side, we will subtract it from 0, so it gives us a negative 10m. Here now, to get v, we then divide both sides by 20m. In doing so, notice that the m's here will cancel out. Whatever the actual mass was, let's say maybe it was 50 kilograms, the mass of the person, here you would also have 50 kilograms in this mass. But it doesn't matter because then it would have still cancelled. So we have negative 10 divided by 20. So that gives us a velocity of negative 0.5 meters per second. Notice here that we got negative. So that means that the boat does not go forward like the person does. The boat goes in the opposite direction. And actually, that's what the word recoil velocity means. So the recoil velocity of the boat is 0.5 meters per second, opposite to the person in general. You could say if you draw your diagram this way that it is to the left, but in general it will just be opposite to the person. And that is always the case. You may have gone to the keys before and you know that when you step off the boat, there is somebody there to hold the boat. Didn't you ever notice that? One of the attendants on the water taxi, they use a rope to hold the boat. They need to do that because if they didn't do that, every time somebody stepped off the boat, they would push the boat further back. That is a direct consequence of Newton's third law of motion. Remember, for every action force, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. It is manifested in these types of explosion problems. If one person moves forward, then somebody else has to move backward. That is how all motion is gained. When you look at a rocket, how does a rocket move forward? Well, the rocket moves forward because it pushes a jet stream of air in the opposite direction. All motion is a consequence of moving things in opposite directions. So with that then, I'll see you girls in class.